Okay, okay, very good. Welcome. Nombulelo, uh, where are you coming in from? That's a very Kosa name. Um, <laughs> are, you, are you somewhere in the Eastern Cape, but now uh, all over the place? So uh, I wish. <laughs> Probably Kosa by default. Okay. I, I grew up with quite a lot of Swanas, but I'm actually all the way in Umhlanga. Okay. I saw the movement this morning from Wanga and I was like, this would be interesting considering that I'm the senior talent acquisition specialist for bed software, IT. So techie and females, I'm in the same WhatsApp group. Cool. So more than anything else, this would be my first, not a first learning curve, but just to gain more knowledge around what else is happening outside from where I am. Perfect. Perfect. Um, Thank you, Musa. We got that message. Uh, and then Sima. Um, hi, everyone. I'm hi. Sima. Um, I'm all the way from Kimberley. Uh, I received an invite from a friend last night, so I thought I'd join in today. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Melvin and Itumele, welcome, welcome. The time now is 5.40. We had said that we're going to give ourselves until 5.40. So at this point in time, it is official. We are starting. And uh, I believe everyone has received a message that we're recording, right? Cool. Thank you, Apiwe. So uh, we're recording this so that as a uh, startup brand, Kimberly, we can one, grow, look back at some of our programs and make the information available for the membership uh, that is there for startup grind Kimberly. But uh, today you're seeing someone you might not have seen before. My name is Siboni Leboy. I am with Startup Grind, but Startup Grind East London chapter. Uh, I am co-director. Our chapter is led by a lady by the name of Ubuyo Nwaiba. So we've been running this chapter since 2018, believe it or not. Uh, a few challenges since we've been virtual, but uh, it's something that has created many opportunities. For those that don't know much about Startup Grind, it is a global organization that brings programs to entrepreneurs. Uh, the thing that Startup Grind is passionate about is entrepreneurship, but also tech. So it's that intersection of uh, entrepreneurship and tech, but also having such sessions so that those that are at a certain level as far as entrepreneurship or have a skill set around tech that they can share with our community. So this is the platform that Startup Grind Kimberly is making available for its members so that its members can grow, its members can know how to tap into resources. And today we're going to be learning from four ladies that are in tech. This is an extension of Women's Month, which was in August. And as far as I'm concerned, every month should be Women's Month. And so this is an opportunity for, for us to realize that there are women in tech that are doing great things. And uh, just so that everyone is aware, we you're more than welcome to put questions on the chat. Um, initially, I'll do the introductions, go through uh, a series of um, interviews with the panel. And then afterwards, we'll have a question and answer where the, the you know, you will be able to ask our panel questions. Uh, and after that, we will uh, then move towards a close. And I believe Wanga or I believe Wanga will uh, come back in to do the, the, the close. So Sia uh, is on the call as well. She will be helping us to monitor the chat, to read any questions that come up. Uh, Sia, you're on, you're on point, right? 
Yes, yes. Sir. Perfect, I perfect. Yeah, thank you for that. Just to to look out uh, for any questions. But since we're such a cozy team, people will also be able to unmute and uh, ask questions. So we need to get started because one of my other hats is that of a Toastmaster and a Toastmasters, it's all about keeping on time. So welcome, welcome everyone. Today we have a panel of four amazing, phenomenal ladies. And um, I'll start up with a lady that I hear being referred to as my Eva. And given what she's accomplished, she more, she, she deserves that ma in front of that Eva. Uh, Mrs. Eva Mamabulo is a lecturer at Salt Lake University uh, in the School of Natural and Applied Science. Uh, and she is in the Department of Computer Science and Information Technology. Now, my Eva has played within the space, within the tech space for, for a while. Not only is she in academia, but she has been in corporate. Uh, she has also been involved in IT auditing. She is, uh, if you can go on mute, I would appreciate it. Uh, Sia, you have, uh, I think you are also, co-host so if you could yes just... um, I'll handle it yes yes so so um I'll, I'll I'll proceed with the intro here so here we have experience at different levels but uh your experience in academia will definitely come hand within the discussions that we're having and then we move on to another outstanding lady in the form of Apiwe Hotele Apiwe is a young female trailblazer who founded an organization called Enlighten EDU, EDU. And it's all around making education available and enabling and democratizing education, making or, or connecting learners to what it is that they need to be educated on. Apiwe um, has been involved in initiatives around breaking the stereotype, uh, normalizing the whole idea of having women in tech. And she goes on to um, doing things around um, uh, technology commercialization uh, specialist. So that's what she works with. So she works as a technology commercialization specialist for the biggest science project in Africa, where she's designed and implemented a novel multi-sensory system for monitoring and environmentally rag, uh, ruggedized uh, container for the telescope's oil immersed supercomputer. Wow, that's a mouthful. I want to hear more about that. So up here, help us understand what that is all about. And then we move on to another lady, Maseho Moncho. Maseho is with MSG IT Solutions. She's an avid energy efficiency specialist uh, who has the vision of extending IT expertise and experience to, the most, to most citizens in the country. Not only is she in energy, but she also has dabbled into cybersecurity, which again, uh, with the times that we find ourselves in, that is significant. Uh, she has, uh, she's currently equipping 500 women across the country with four IR skills through an NPC. Maseho, you're very welcome and we want to hear more from you. And then Hannah, Hannah Sibulai. Hannah represents another very important segment among women. A woman that is in the, you know, a student at this point, but still have, being a student is, doesn't mean that you're not gaining technical skills outside the student environment. So she has been with the Engineering Without Borders uh, chapter. And um, Hannah has been involved with gig culture. She is uh, with the investor of Salt Lake, but again, um, her passion is around data science. 
Hannah, you're welcome. We want to hear from you about your whole experience as a student who's, who, who, who actually has tech skills. So, our ladies, uh, Maeva, Akiwe, uh, Maseho, and Hannah, there's a question I want to pose so that our listeners here today can get to understand whom they're dealing with. Who are you? And what, you know, can you, can you, can you, in two to three minutes each, can you just give us that journey as to how you got to where you are? So who are you? Just so that we can get a feel as to who we're speaking with. But again, you've accomplished so much. Uh, just a brief uh, about around your journey to where you are today. Starting out with my Eva. Thank you. I'll go on mute right now. And again, the whole idea around uh, cameras, you're more than welcome to turn your camera on. I'll keep my camera on just so that people know that they're speaking to a human on the other side. If you can and bandwidth allows, please go ahead and, and uh, put your camera on. But if you prefer not to have your camera on, that's fine as well. The main thing is for everyone to be mute while one person speaks. On to you, Maeva. Thank you so much, Ms. Spongide. Yeah, colleagues, you are speaking to Mrs. Eva Mamabolo, um, a mother of three, a girl, two boys. Uh, I grew up in Soweto. Uh, I furthered my study at Vista doing a BSc Computer Science and Chemistry. And then from there, I I got employed at um, IBM, but due to depression, I had to leave early. Then I took a gap year, and then I went back again to industry. When I went back to industry, I did my A plus, N plus, and then I got employed at a ESCOM. I joined ESCOM 2000, but in between that year, uh, I just took odd jobs there and there, same tech, you know, you do desktop uh, support and all that. From there, I joined ESCOM, like I said. When I joined ESCOM, I was the contract officer. Contracts officer meaning that you, uh, we were the link between Arivia back then and ESCOM, you know, uh, managing the contract. But mainly it was on the support side. Then I moved to SCADA at Duva Power Station. There were you the reticulation side where you draw a substation and then you link it up to, you know, internally and outside so that the controllers can see when a breaker has tripped and all that. From there, I moved to support at Megawatt Park. I stayed there. There you would do, you know, your business analyst side of it where you are involved with systems from conception until the implementation. Just before I left ESCOM, I was at a auditing, IT auditing. I stayed there for a year and I decided to quit. Why? I don't know. You ask me. I think what had a purpose for me. And then, you know, I stayed, I think for a year, still having health challenges. I joined TUT. For me to find myself at in academia, I joined TUT as an invigilator. From there, then my CV was taken to the software development, that's when I, I was absorbed as a, a part-time lecturer because of my experience. But they took me with a, a condition that you do your BTEC. Then I did BTEC in business information systems. Then I worked for TUT four years. 2015, I joined SPU uh, with a permanent post. You know, when they said it's a permanent post, I didn't even look back, I ran to the Northern Cape. I didn't know where it was located, where am I going? So I found myself at the, uh, at here in Kimbali. And I don't want to lie to you. That's where I discovered who I am here at, in Kimbali. And it's not even my second home, it's my first home because that's when I discovered who I am. And you know, my passion, what I'm doing here, it's, it's out of this world. Thank you. Wow, Maeva, thank you, thank you for that. 
um, sometimes we find ourselves in places we never anticipated. Thank you, thank you for that. Moving on to Apiwe Apiwe. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have you here. If you could just introduce yourself in two to three minutes, Max, we would appreciate to hear from you. Thank you. Hi, Sbongile, and uh, good evening to everyone here on the call today. Um, first of all, I'd like to say to my Eva, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Like, I can feel the emotions as you are talking. And I kind of also could like absorb the emotions as my Eva was talking because, you know, I, it's heavy and you can almost tell that it's been quite a heavy journey. And I'm just so happy that she's still in tech today because that's quite exciting because many people have left because of how heavy the journey is. Um, my name is Apiwa Otele. I, am, I was born and raised in Falbank, a small village in Lady Frey. Um, near Queenstown. I grew up there for pretty much all my life. Um, I did my um, BSc in computer science and biochemistry. And I was quite happy when my Eva was talking because I'm like, oh my gosh, people have always asked me, why did you do computer science and biochemistry? I've got someone who's done computer science and chemistry. That's just so cool. So, <laughs> so and then I went on to do my master's from the University of Cape Town in computer engineering. Um, my journey in tech started, I think I had always wanted, growing up, I wanted to be a medical doctor, actually. So I wanted to be a medical doctor. So now I understand why I wanted to be a medical doctor, because it was the only um, sort of like skill that was available to me at that time. We had a family doctor at home that was female. And every time I would walk into her surgery, I'd be so amazed and motivated. And I think it was also my, the fact that I wanted to help people. And at that time, I thought the best way to help people was through being um, a, a medical doctor. I didn't understand that there were other aspects to tech um, that I could help people through. So, but then I did not have a maths and science teacher from grade 10 to 12. So I taught myself mathematics, essentially. I did not make all the good marks to get to medicine. So, so I was depressed in grade 12. So that's why I was saying I understand my Eva's uh, thing because I'm coming from that rabbit hole myself. Um, from a very, very young age, I, I experienced rejection. And I think I was quite angry at the world because I was like, even though I had taught myself, that didn't count. Well, you know, everyone just moved on normally as if nothing had happened. Um, and, 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 and I was still compared to everyone else that had all the resources, even though I didn't. So um, I, I was depressed for a while. And then my short, long story short, my parents decided, okay, this child, um, you know, I, I said to them, I'm not going back to school, essentially. Like, that's what I said. And they were so stressed. I think they thought I was going to hang myself. Um, and one day uh, in front of our home, there's like a, a, a community tap. And I used to go there. And in front of our home, there's also a school. And I literally used to go there. And every time I used to meet students that would complain about maths and science and how hard it is and whatnot. And I think that was a turning point for me because I realized at that point that I'm not alone. There are so many APUs. And I said to myself, if I'm not the one who's going to stand up for these APUs, then who is going to stand up for these APUs? So then I, on that same day, I called my parents and I was like, I'm going back to school. I don't care which university I go to. Uh, my parents were so excited that day and they were like, no, we dropping everything, we're taking you to the University of Forte. By God's grace, I was accepted there. And I started my journey there and fell in love with computer science. And essentially that's where my journey started. Currently, I work as a technology commercialization specialist for the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. Um, and I've also founded my own company, Enlighten AU, which really is very close to my heart because it speaks to a problem that solves, that it kind of speaks to my own problem. Um, because Enlighten is a diagnostic um, and progress tracking software for learners, ensuring that learners from anywhere in the world are able to connect and find assistance and, um, and, and, and essentially, so, so that's that. And I've also founded Hashtag Breaking the Stereotype, a movement that aims to reduce the attrition of females um, studying uh, science and engineering in institutions of higher learning. I'm very passionate about inclusion and diversity Honestly, I am tired of being the only female in the room. I think it's high time we all stand up because we own the spaces. We belong to be in the spaces. So yeah, I think I'm gonna cut it short there right now. I know you asked, you wanted to know more about 
the <laughs> cooling system that I developed, but I think maybe we can get into that later on because I think my three minutes is actually over now. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you so very much. Uh, we'll hear more about this. Worst case, we'll just make sure that everyone has uh, the links that they're talking about and mainly their profile so that this is the start of a longer conversation. It is not going to end here today. So it is such a great pleasure to hear from you all. And oops, sorry, I muted myself. Now, moving on, let me just, um, for some reason, it's not allowing me to un, uh, okay, I was trying to, um, sorry, um, okay. Uh, I'm trying to untell or like remove you from the screen so that I can bring the other lady. And now that option, I don't see it anymore. It was here, now I don't see it. But Sia, um, uh, uh, your help would be appreciated. Um, okay, sir. So okay, so if you could just bring the next speaker on and that is Maseho. Maseho. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so very much, Sia. Uh, Maseho, it is such a great pleasure to have you in our company. In, can you please help us understand who you are and uh, how you got to where you are today? Good afternoon, ladies and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I really feel honored to be invited in this platform. My name is Maseho Moncho. I'm the free state heroine in ICT. I'm the Black IT Forum executive, both at the provincial and national. Um, the IT graduate, the former lecturer. Hence, my company has a portion of development. So I grew up in the Northern Cape in Pampristat. My journey in ICT started 16 years ago at the Central University of Technology. That's where uh, I did my IT qualification, not only IT qualification, you know, ICT is evolving. So I always make sure that I keep up with the latest in the industry. Hence, I, through my business journey, we managed to um, bring Cisco Academy. So we are a Cisco Academy accredited. In, we are competing with the same university that I attended that equipped me um, because I saw a, a, a gap in the industry. So I wanted also to lift more women as Apio was indicating. The, it, it, you will be the only woman in the room. So let's not be wary of uh, equipping more. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that, Maseho. Maseho, you, there is a theme uh, that is uh, prevalent here about women lifting up women, making it normal for women to be in tech spaces. So moving on, and I want us to delve into that at a later time, how we can normalize women in the tech space. Let's move on and then uh, speak with our young lady, Hannah. Hannah, um, so I'll remove the spotlight on me and then uh, if we could bring Hannah on. Are you doing it? Uh, Wanga or Sia? Sia, are you bringing Hannah? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, I am. Um, could Hannah please um, unmute and open her video on her side? Um, uh, I, 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 my background. <laughs> Hannah, it's fine. Yes, Hannah, it's okay. okay. okay it's okay. okay. It, you're fine the way you are. 
Okay, um, can I start speaking? Definitely. Oh, okay, um, good evening, uh, fellow attendees. I am Hannah Sibolai and I am studying data science at Sol Plaike University. Um, I played, I once played rugby <laughs> before COVID. <laughs> And I attended Homeville High School here in Kimberley. So yeah, I was born and bred in Kimberley. And I was fortunate enough during the time I was in high school, um, I joined the Maths and Science Leadership Academy um, here in Kimberley. And through that, that is where I was exposed to things such as uh, STEM education, for IR, community engagement projects, and data science as a possible career path. So, um, at the time that I started studying, I didn't really know much about data science until this year, because this year, that's, this is where like, my journey started, because um, I was supposed to have graduated last year. I couldn't graduate because there were a few modules that I'd failed that held me back from um, enrolling for my final year module so that I could finish. And so during this time this year, first semester, I couldn't go back because I was financially excluded. And I, I was talking for a while, but then I was like, nah, man, let's learn on our own. So that's, that is exactly what I did. Um, the first hackathon that I attended this year really helped me to just assess um, the, the, the skill set that I have, how far I was and what I needed to work on. So from that time onwards, I, I started watching i found youtubers uh professors that along with other just other youtubers who have qualifications in the various tech spaces would help me to improve my programming my critical skill sense and other things that i needed um, to know at some point as an aspiring data scientist and through the open campus events and the co-clinics that are hosted by um, Geek Culture Student Society. Uh, it's where I learned about the tech space that I wasn't exposed to in like the data science sector. And the hackathons that I attended throughout the year also made me realize that um, I wanted to venture into becoming a developer. So I might at some point become a software engineer. Who knows? <laughs> and um, that any uh, potential idea can end up as a product or a business with the right marketing and resources. So um, hackathons are actually quite, quite helpful. And what really also helped me this year was just surrounding myself with the right type of people, uh, prioritizing my time and just trying new things. Because when the year started, I couldn't stand in front of anyone and speak. You can, I, I remember I, my, my, it was also there at the hackathon. I was in front of the, of the the mic and I was required to present. The judges couldn't hear a word that was coming out of my mouth. But throughout this year, uh, being a part of, of these student societies, it helped to really boost my communication skills and my confidence. It's, it's, it's still in a working progress. And we should also remember to stay resilient. And one also has to remember that the destination is always going to be there, but you should just enjoy the journey. Yeah, thank you. Hannah, wow. There's so much wisdom packed in you as a young person. Thank you very much for that. You raise many important aspects. You, you raise critical skills that one needs to uh, build and that have helped you to transition. We want to address that at a later time. You mentioned the whole idea of prioritizing your time, keeping the right company, and that is all the soft stuff that even as techies, we need to build on. Excellent. Now, we've all been introduced to our four speakers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us that background. Now, we do have a series of questions that are gonna be targeted. I may not have to, uh, I may not ask you to all respond to the same question. Um, what I will do is, a target uh, one lady for a particular question. So, um, Maseho, Maseho, you uh, you partner with global players to equip uh, women with four IR skills. That is critical, and I know your passion around um, the whole idea of normalizing. 
uh, the sort of women in tech and making sure that safe spaces are created for women in tech, making sure that women, uh, the churn is not there. So I just want you to help us understand how you do that, but mostly how women in tech that are in the room can um, do the same thing so that you can amplify the work that you do through the people that are in this room. How can we bring more women in tech? How can we keep more women in tech? And how can we make the whole idea of being in tech something that everyone you know, it shouldn't be something that people get surprised over. So on to you, Maseho, around the whole idea of bringing more women in tech, keeping them there and normalizing uh, the whole women in tech experience. Maseho. I think, thank you so much. Um, as the world enters the fourth IR, women can no longer be spectators, but needs to be active participant in this emerging economy. Uh, there is an extremely poor retention of women in the industry. So according to Leaky Path report that was presented, we even uh, presented this to the deputy minister last year through the Black IT Forum and South African Women in ICT. It indicated that 23% of, of, there's only 23% of ICT, of women in the ICT workforce. About 56,000 uh, ICT role occupied by women. So we have not yet transformed. Hence, I came up with, uh, a, an NPC. We, we partnered with Cisco International Academy. So what we do there, we equip women with different ICT skills, which are highly required in the market. There is a difference between graduating at a university. It can either be BTEC, honors and so forth. But at the end of the day, you need to specialize and equip yourself with what is required in the industry. So fourth IR brings so many, so much opportunities. So we decided to uh, equip women on cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is an industry on its own. You go to LinkedIn, there are 400 jobs or 100 jobs across the country, which are not occupied. But you hear IT graduates complaining about unemployment. The problem in the country is not in our industry. It's skill match. So there are many uh, tools out there. So we urge youth, unemployment, graduate, to do research on what the industry requires. The reason we, we are spending in, in, in with so much high unemployment is because of skills mismatch. So let's reskill and upskill with what the industry requires. You need to be, as, as an IT graduate, you need to specialize. Hannah, when she finish, she's guaranteed of opportunities because she's standing out as a data scientist. So we need that, we need IoT specialists, we need cloud specialists, we need drone specialists. How many do we have there in, in, in the Northern Cape? Do we have uh, graduates specializing in blockchain, for an example? And why isn't that, why, why, why are we having that gap while there are so many tools out there, free resources? It's a matter of being strategic. So let me be, uh, be practical. Mm -hmm. I challenge 
uh, Sol Plaki and other stakeholders. For an example, uh, do we have security officers across all the departments in the Northern Cape? If we equip at least 20 cybersecurity specialists, we are guaranteed because there is already a gap in that uh, department. So my uh, opinion is that we need to ensure that women are given all the necessary tools to exploit this new economy. And it's all about passion. IT industry is not easy. It's not an easy game. You need to be passionate about uh, making a difference. Uh, from, from my side, staying in Bloemfontein, most of the, the, my peers who I graduated with uh, years ago, they moved to Cape Town, Joburg, and Debbie. That's where the big corporates are. I thought to myself, I need to make a difference here. We cannot all move. Who will remain? Who will establish that company that will hire IT graduate in the province? So that was my vision. Hence, I left my formal employment to start this. And what has helped me a lot is to network with the giant in the industry. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Maseho. Uh, you raised many important points of one, creating the companies that can develop the skills and then and, and create the environment that we want to um, have for women to actually uh, thrive in. I'm hearing that. I'm hearing about skills that we need to build. And within the chat or another avenue which Utseho or Wanga might advise on, I would like us to understand, you know, you mentioned the Cisco Academy, how can people in this call, and, you know, um, know how to become a part of the Cisco Academy, you know? So I, we just want to get to a point where uh, as, we, as we recommend skilling and reskilling and upskilling, um, what, are, what are the things, tangible things? So I'm gonna come back to you and we'll find the best platform to actually uh, document these things so that these resources are there. But you mentioned something very important about academia. And now I am going to be moving on to my Eva. My Eva, if you could just come to the stage and, and help us understand what so Plaiki is doing how you you know if i'm on the call today or i'm a member of uh start of grind uh kimberly and i want to go the you know the university of blanky direction or i you know I, I i need to gain some of these skills are you able to advise about the role of the university and just creating that path um, uh, through academia to say, this is how Soul Plaki uh, does it so that we can have more women in tech. This is how we are, um, are making a difference within the space. If you could just help us understand as an institution, how you are enabling uh, women in tech. Uh, Maiva. Thank you so much uh, for the question. Uh, let me tell you, it's it's not easy, like starting starting with us as as ladies who are in the lecturing space. It's not easy, but we try by all means, you know, to support each other as ladies. You know, we push each other when it, when, whether it's it's you know you have to further your studies, any opportunities that come, we always advise each other to upgrade ourselves. But when it comes to students, fortunately, we we work very closely as 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 a school, as a department of uh, computer science and information technology. We work very closely with industry. We work with geek culture. We work with engineers with 
with bothers, uh, without bothers like Hannah, she's the chairperson of that. And we also work with Ms. Seho, your NCIF. We also work with Osma Seho. Like last year, she also we also partnered with her. We trained ladies on um, your introduction to cybersecurity. That's what we do. But not only that, we we also work with Mr. Melvin. If you uh, she, he's part of the meeting. What we do, we intentionally involve ladies in leadership. For instance, like Hannah, we had. National Science Week a few weeks ago. She was the program director of that session. I mean, you would like, I, 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 don't, I don't plan events alone. That's one thing that we, we do. We don't plan events alone. It's students who are at the forefront running them at that part. It's, it's a, ladies are also included. And like Hannah, she's, she's one of the ladies that are in the forefront, I think. Uh, it's for the first time this year, let me not say, yeah, if I, if I, my memory really serves me well. It's for the first time this year that we have more ladies in the committee, both committees. We've joined both committees, but we have more ladies uh, in the forefront running. Thank you. I don't know if I've answered you, but that's, that's basically what we are doing in, in developing them. They are organizing events in between it's ladies who are running that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Maiva. I, I hear you. What you're saying is that you are giving um, your students and more especially women's students the platform for them to grow and develop. So, so I, I think that is an excellent thing to do, but you mentioned initially that things are not easy. So I would, my challenge to you would be to engage startup grind um, Kimberly on how else you can make it possible for women uh, to be you know to, to go through your program and sometimes I've seen situations where universities come with a short-term program six-month program where they're not you know you're not giving someone the whole you know three-year degree on something but you're working with uh, people where they are and coming up with custom programs that will help people grow. So I know Startup Grind, uh, Kimberly, could be that place where you can engage and, you know, as they understand what the needs are, engage with you to see how else we can empower women, what other programs would work well. But what you've said is, a, is an excellent, excellent starting point where you're giving young women. I mean, I, I heard Hannah speak and uh, hearing from where she's been, you have done a great job in terms of helping to develop her. This, communication doesn't come natural to me. It's something that I work on all the time. So to have that place for people to grow is, 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 is definitely a value add. Thank you, Ma'ana, for that. Now, moving on to our POA. And up here, I can, you know, when I listen to you and read your bio, you're a futurist. And now I want you uh, to, I want you to, to hold a crystal, imagine that you're holding this crystal, crystal ball in your hand. And um, what do you think the future holds? And what do you recommend we do in order to thrive in the future that you envision? Did you hear that question? Up here. I did. I heard that question. It's actually quite a mouthful. Um, and it's quite interesting that you say you read my bio and realize that I'm a futurist. I, I actually do spend quite a lot of time imagining a lot of things around the future. And I like to say to people, everything that I have accomplished, honestly, I have imagined it at some point, one way or the other. So I do quite a lot of imagination, whether if that's a good or a bad thing, I'm not too sure. I think the future is very bright, um, honestly, as a start. I think the future is very bright, honestly, because looking at where we've come now, uh, you, or, or rather where we've come from, in terms of apartheid and, and, and you know, oppression around women and females and so on, I think we're at a better place purely because a lot of people are talking about it. And I like to say to people, that is the first step. 
we all need to come to the table and talk about it and say, what is the actual problem and how can we solve it? So I think in that realm, we're actually, the, the future is quite bright. I think um, the future is also very tech enabled. And I think all of us know that with the 4IR and all of these different types of IR, whatever, um, the future definitely involves each and every one of us knowing about tech one way or the other. And this does not necessarily mean that all of us have to be techies. That, that would be unrealistic. Not all of us are going to be techie, but one way or the other, we are going to have to make use of tech either in our own personal spaces or in our businesses or in our own homes and so on. So all of us need to start adjusting and getting used to the idea of that tech is going to be with us one way or the other and we need to adapt to that. I think the other thing that we also need to you know, start thinking about is how do we start including more people in tech. And now I'm talking about your rural areas, I'm talking about you know, the marginalized, the people that are not in front of us right now. How do we start, and I'm challenging each and every one of us in our own spaces to start thinking about, how do we make sure that you know, the transformation around tech goes deeper than just, um, you know, and it's not just about the numbers for me, but it's really about really equipping the people, even if, and it doesn't mean that they have to get a certificate for it, but they have to be aware of what is available for them, you know, available to them. And I'm always like so sad sometimes that a lot of people don't even know about the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. And this kind of hurts me so much because I'm like, where in the world, we are in a, in a, in a space, let me put it like that rather, where we are able to use the data that we're gonna get from the Meerkat telescope to question Einstein's theory. Like, how cool is that? Do students even know about this? Do they know that this is what the future holds for us right now? That we are going to use this data that we're gonna get from this telescope that is right behind us because it is right next door to all of us, this telescope. And we're gonna, all we need to do is you literally just need to have your, your mathematics um, and physical science right. And then, you know, SKA is offering people bursaries and, and so on so that they can be part of this amazing telescope. So I think the future is so bright in that space, but I also think we have to challenge ourselves. I've been hearing both the women here talking about the importance of including women. I think when it comes to the inclusion of women, and I realized this with hashtag breaking the stereotype as well, Yes, there's a skills aspect to it, but a big part of it is the soft skills. Because we've been told so many times and repeatedly that this space is not for us, we tend to believe it. And therefore our confidence levels go down. And that is the actual problem. It's not that we're not skilled, we are. And that's why hashtag breaking the stereotype focuses on university students. Because our argument is that they qualified because if they didn't, the university wouldn't have accepted them. They wanted to be there because if they didn't, they wouldn't have applied for the program. But for some reason, at the end, when it's time to graduate, they're gone. What has happened in between the time? So there is something during the time that they're studying that makes them disappear. And we need to understand what that problem is. And I think that is the same thing we need to apply in the workplace to understand why are women leaving the space? What is it about the environment that is not welcoming of women? And I think that is the conversation that all of us are not to some degree ready to have. And I think that is where the future is going. But I also want to say in closing, the future is so bright, especially in tech, because there are so many women that are role models. Literally, that are more than happy for you as a young graduate, if you're on this call right now, to stand on, you, on their shoulders. I am one of those pe people. I always say to myself, I would have failed as a mother. I'm a mother to nine, nine year old and I have my nine year ne old nephew. If my daughter has to go through the same problems I went through. And that's why I'm saying the, the future is bright because they don't have to start from where we started off. They can literally stand on our shoulders and carry on. 
and, and, and run the path. And the decisions that we're making today are literally going to pave the way for them in the future. So I think, yeah. Apua, that is profound. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I hope everyone had that on the call that we do have shoulders to stand on and it's each other's shoulders, but it's also those that are in an industry that you want to grow in. Uh, definitely the future is bright. That is positive. Before I hand over to q and I want to hear from our young Hannah. Hannah. So you, 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 you know, at your opening, you said some very, um, uh, you know, uh, profound statements around uh, critical skills, prioritization, and keeping the right company. What I want to hear from you, Hannah, is, and I know you came, and there's something else, by the way, that defines you, and that's resilience. Um, getting to a place and realizing that that's not where you want to be, but that doesn't make you stop. That makes you continue uh, failing forward. So uh, there's something around skills and um, what has been your source of skills? Uh, you know, whom have you followed? Uh, and, you know, at this point in time, uh, I'm give, uh, also I'm very conscious of time. You may not list uh, the people that you necessarily followed, but the avenues that people can go through as they grow or as they as they as they go through this journey of being uh, of growing their tech skills, of growing within the tech uh, space. Uh, what is it that you recommend people do? You might talk about tools again. You might talk about um, websites. You might talk about um, things that people can do. Uh, you mentioned earlier, yes, we understand the whole idea of prioritizing uh, what's important. You mentioned about keeping the right company. You mentioned about um, pu public speaking, which is something that you've grown in. Uh, you know, <laughs> you represent yourself very well. Uh, are there other things that you identified that have helped you in the process? Okay, um, thank you so much for the question, ma'am. Um, in terms of the tools that I've especially been using this year, the biggest one has to be YouTube, like just YouTube. And with that, it comes with then finding actual YouTubers that you will be, that will able to help you understand the content that you need to learn. Um, there's free online courses from Coursera. Another one is from a Great Learning which is an um, Indian, actual Indian um, company that has um, lecturers from, who have graduated from universities overseas and have actually gone back to India and are teaching at those universities. So you get access to their lectures and the, the resources that they use. It's really been helpful. And I actually remember that every time, whenever I would speak about those lecturers during hackathons, my friends would always make fun of me and say, I'm the only one that can understand what they're saying, they couldn't understand what they're saying. <laughs> However, the knowledge that I, I gained from that has really, really been helpful. Another um, resource that's helpful is towards data science. That helps a lot because it, it, it has information on various aspects of data science or that's, that's really, really, really helpful. And then there's, there's Google. I mean, you can just literally Google stuff and you'll find it. And in terms of a great learning, it's not only available on YouTube, but it's an actual, actual um, learning platform. It's, it's really, 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 really helpful. So those are the, the tools that I can actually think of that have really been helpful for me. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Hannah. Hannah, you mentioned Coursera. I had Coursera, uh, and it's definitely a tool that I I, um, I use a lot as well. And by the way, Coursera, you can take an, a course without paying uh, as long as you don't want to get a certificate at the very end. But ultimately, it's about the knowledge as opposed to the certificate. But you can also pay if you want the certificate. You mentioned another platform um for for courses for online courses yes ma'am it's it's called great learning great learning yes ma'am. g-r-e-a-t yeah? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. GRE. Yeah, great learning. And uh, and yes, you mentioned the YouTubers. Yeah, there's so much of them. Oh, and um, I also forgot, did I mention Kegel? Or Kegel, Kegel, I don't know. Yes, um, that one, it's, it's mostly where you find the various um, data science competitions that are there. You, you also get the solutions that people have been working on. So if maybe you wanna assess how far you are on a certain topic, you can just go there and then see, you also get, have access to the data that's, that um, the data sets that they have been, um, that they use for that specific competition. And then we just look at the various solutions that people came up with, and then you'll then see, okay, this is something cool I can implement, it's, it's things like that. So it's, it's these um, tools are very, very helpful. You just need to know how to use them. Thank you. Just spell Kaggle, please. Um, K A G G L E. Perfect. K K A G G L E. Thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, at this point in time, I'll hand over to Sia. Sia to lead the Q and A, and then later on, Sia will hand over to Wanga to thank everyone and close for us. Thank you so very much. Um, so heading over to you, Sia, to manage the Q and A. Um, thank you so much, Sib. Um, we actually had one question that I noted down from Wanga, which was posed to Maiva. Um, I'm just going through the chat box. Um, Wanga, if you can, um, I'd request that you open your mic and then pose that question, please. Wanga, are you still on the house? Yes, I was muted. Um, yes. Uh, wait, is it the one that I posed to me, Eva, or the one I posed to me, myself? I think I posed it to me, myself. It was basically how can other women become part of the Cisco Academy? All right, then. Um, I would like Umaseho to please unmute and um, answer Wanga's question. And if there is anyone else who has a question, to please lift up their hand and I'll note that. Thank you. Uh, we, we were working with different uh, organizations and academia. What we do, we would uh, go to Northern Cape, recruit with Sol Blackie. We worked with uh, Val Technology, TUT, and in Eastern Cape, we worked with N NMU to recruit women and register them on the system. So for individuals, they can check our social media pages and the website to register. Whenever the program is it's open, they can apply. Thank you so much. So, so the company is MSG Solutions. Our they can find us on Facebook on MSG Solutions. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think you also mentioned that you guys um advertise programs. So I would like to ask what what kind of programs do you guys um, advertise and um, what is your target market at this point? A target market for, for example, for cybersecurity, we need IT graduates because they, they have used uh, Cisco systems before. For entry programs, anyone can, can do that because we have even run such program, entry, entry programs with like your introductory to Internet of Things, introductory to cybersecurity. Those are the uh, very short courses that can be done by anyone in any industry. So for high level uh, programs, like in-depth cybersecurity, we need uh, one to be, to have IT experience because they, they won't be able to, manage if they don't have a uh, experience some of them are online self-paced the the entry one that i've indicated so
So you can do it from anywhere you are in the country because we, we have the online platform on our academy. Thank you so much for that. Much appreciated. Um, we have also a comment from Nombulelo. If you can, Nombulelo, please open your mic and your video and then the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm actually at work. I can't have the video because of confidential information that's behind me. I've been struggling the whole time to set up a border behind me. Sorry for that. And yeah, so it's been very interesting listening to everyone. Very much appreciated knowledge sharing. Um, but the comments actually comes from letting you guys know that I'm actually um, within the IT recruitment environment. So, you know, I heard about... Kegel, which I'm very familiar with, you know, and currently I'm in search of security and information security and analysts. So other than that, I think I heard someone ask about learning sites where people can engage with, you know, here at Bed Software, what I've actually learned, there's also plural sites, which software, software devs or perhaps anybody also within the infrastructure who's interested in taking on courses, you have that, there's Udemy, there's LinkedIn Learning, YouTube is your friend. Um, but I think also most importantly, the people to also engage with, you know, from a learning platform, it, quite a lot of them are coming from LinkedIn. So with that said, with the female, with the female in tech, it's very important for them to understand. And it was very interesting when someone here said, they're moving away from IT. You know, it's, it's as if like they study IT and then they move away from it, you know. And this is exactly what I'm also a bit passionate about because I do run movements on LinkedIn, particularly for my company looking for developers. I'm curious in terms of what they want to do because most of people, the mistake that female developers do is they say they look for a job. I'm not too sure how I can help you because I don't know what you're looking for. But what I always advise is that what have you learned in varsity that really intrigued you? And they'll come out and like, I actually like this versus that. And I'm like, why don't you now start communicating with people that are in your direction? Look for these techie house that offer the same tools and technology that you're in because it makes it easier to navigate into what you've learned and hold on into it. Obviously, well, through the years, you'll start unpacking other more technologies. But yeah, this was very much insightful. Um, it's my first time attending a woman in tech. There's another one that I'm joining tomorrow with my company that put together that I would like to invite everybody who's also actually interested. There's quite a lot of um, speakers on this one and it's, it's actually going to be very interesting and it will further um, open everybody up. It's unfortunate I'm not in the Northern Cape, but I'm very much curious how things work because you know, for me, a female tech can come anywhere. But yeah, thank you very much for the invites. Um, thank you so much, Nombulelo. Sorry. Uh, okay, Sivo, no problem. Um, I'd like you, Nombulelo, to please share um, all the information and the links on the chat box, if you can. Um, we would really love to engage with that um, event. Um, I just want to say one thing, Ne. Um, I think I, I'm in the same boat as Hannah. And the difference is that I'm, I'm an entrepreneur is when I was first introduced um, to gee culture, that's when I decided that, you know what, uh, I am leaving consulting. I want to be a tech entrepreneur and it's really been um, great, great. It's really been um, challenging, but it's really um, such an amazing industry to be in. Um, we have a hand up. Um, Okay, it disappeared now, but if you had recently put your hand up, please unmute and the stage is yours. And then after that, um, I'd love to give um, Usibo, I think she had something to say as well. Thank you. Hi, so the hand up was me. Um, and I think I just wanted to make a comment on what you were speaking on in terms of how do you encourage young people to get into and stay in the industry, right? And I really wanna emphasize the importance of mentorship. And when I say mentorship, I wanna say genuine uh, mentorship, you know, because there's this culture of trying to force everyone to be a mentor. And we don't really understand that, you know, sometimes that's not 
for everyone. And the ones that are assigned mentors that are not, you know, good at it or trained or, you know, really groomed for it tend to get demoralized when they come into the industry. And we know how tough the industry is because, you know, we've had our fair share and really my staying power has just been, I've been a, lucky enough to have a very strong mentor that ensured that my needs were taken care of, that ensured that I was getting the learning opportunities that I was asking for. Because keep in mind, these are people that they don't even know that they don't know anything here. You know, they know they don't know because they haven't been in the industry, but there's so much more that goes on that they're going to have to figure out for themselves. And university doesn't prepare them for the dynamics of the workplace, definitely not. And there's going to be hard, hard lessons in the early days, you know, to get to the point where they are um, competent in that regard. But I need to stress how important a competent mentor is because before I actually, I mean, I was ready to leave when she came in. And now I understand that I have a responsibility to the incoming graduates, you know. And so I have a very strong team and it's just young people and people keep asking me how, how are these people so dedicated to you? And it's, it's clearly, it's only because I've created a safe space where they can present their needs and say, I need this, I'm struggling here or this. And I, I tell them that's a valid concern because it's a need, you know? I think a lot of people have been through so much that they actually forget that these are needs. As a human being, you have needs and you can say, I need to go home at this time. I need to do this to take care of my life. That's Your need is not something that you can negotiate very important to understand once you take care of them in that manner then they'll do anything for you you know that is so profound palisa thank you so much for that um, i'm going to give um usibo um the mic no no um thank you sia you asked the question I was going to ask Nombulelo about that um, session she's going to have, but I think Apiwe has a hand up. I'm, I'm cool. Great then, Ms. Otele, please, the mic is yours. <laughs> Thanks, and you're spot on there with my surname. It's, it's not always the case. Eh, we got a lot of people who are Okay. Um, so I just wanted to say, um, uh, first of all, I, I definitely agree with what Paris has just said. Um, it's, it's very important and I've come to realize that great, when someone has received a great mentor, they tend to be a great mentor themselves. I don't know how, how or why, but I guess there's some kind of replication in the process that kind of happens due to this. So I have no doubt that because Balisa received a great mentor, she is a great mentor herself. So it, it kind of, and, and I think also mentorship is, is, is linked to, it's something that someone has to be passionate about. We cannot all be mentors. And, and I think that is really the reality about it. And the fact that we're trying to, all of us feel the need to be mentors when we know very well that we're not good. We end up creating, um, you know, we end up making the situation worse rather than actually helping because people end up feeling like, oh my gosh, this is so much and so on. I actually wanted, when I raised my hand, I actually wanted to talk about how we can attract, first of all, more, more women in tech. I think it is very important for us, one, to have more role models. There are more than enough females in tech that can act as role models to these. And role model means that they, the young people need to know that there are people in the space that are doing this and need to know what they are doing, that there are people who are breaking ground. And I think it starts there so that they can identify themselves through these people. So if a female, young female uh, person sees a peer, for example, they're like, oh my gosh, she's in tech, that's so cool. And, and, and that's literally how young people, you know, get, get attracted to something. But I think to some degree, attraction is part of the problem. The biggest problem is, you know, around, um, 
retention. And I think in that we need to create more spaces where we share our authentic stories. And I think this is very important. A lot of us make it seem like it is so easy, but it's actually not. It is not easy at all. As a result, when people go through what we've gone through, they feel like they are failures because they are looking at a pure from the outside. And they're like, but she didn't go through this. I cannot relate with what, with what is happening to me right now. And therefore I'm a failure. Not knowing that I've just walked through exactly the same path that the person is going through. So I think we need to create more spaces where people actually literally share their authentic stories as authentic as they are. And I would actually take this opportunity also to invite any young people on the call right now that are doing um, math, science or engineering degree in any institution of higher learning that is a female, we have what we call hashtag venting sessions. Every uh, month, every third Wednesday, uh, well, sorry, last Wednesday of the month, we have what we call venting sessions. And child, we vent. Like, we vent. <laughs> I don't wanna lie, we vent. It's a safe space. We come together, we've got a mixture of people from the industry, we've got young people, we come together and we vent about what we've been, just last month we were talking about uh, imposter syndrome and how we can get over that and people were sharing authentic stories. The month people were talking about failure where people were saying I failed all my modules and I don't know how to continue, what am I supposed to do and people were sharing their stories and how they overcome that authentic stories and I think if people can, if there's any young person right here that is thinking of quitting or needs an open space where they can share and express themselves authentically, please do. I've shared the, the, the link to hashtag breaking the stereotype. Follow us on Instagram as well and Twitter and all the other platforms, breaking the stereotype. Please do join. Don't give up just as yet. You're in the right space. And what you're going through is not new to you. We've also gone through it as well. You just need to talk to us about it and we are more than open to talking to you about it. Just one last thing to the entrepreneurs. Always remember that you were alone when God spoke to you. Literally, you were alone when God spoke to you about that idea that you have that you feel like right now, it's not going great. I don't know the direction or whatever, or I feel like I need more people to help me. Child, you were alone when God spoke to you. And he chose you with that idea for a reason because he trusted you. So how dare you not trust yourself? Like, how do you do that to yourself? Because he's already trusted you. And it's also quite important for you to know that it is okay to walk certain journeys alone. Like, it is so okay to walk certain journeys alone. And that is totally fine. I've walked so many journeys alone and I've realized that sometimes it's fine and people will get it somewhere along the line. Thank you so much for inviting me to this session today. I really appreciate it. And I hope you can have more of these sessions and please do invite me in the future. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. And I feel like um, everyone who's in the call is directed to them that they must take care of themselves. Um, I would like to pass on the mic to Meiva. Um, your hand has been up. Please open your mic and take the stage. Meiva, are you still in the house? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I muted myself. Sorry, sorry. For I just wanted to appreciate first. Uh, uh, appear for 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 the last words that she said you know i have not been in a good space myself you know where you feel rejected and she just said it's okay to walk the journey alone at some point and and thank you for reminding me of that uh, colleagues i just wanted to say to us at some point you found your passion i think passion helps us to build that resilience and I wish we could help the young ones to identify that. Like Apiwe was saying that, you know, God has put that idea in you. It might not be an idea as an entrepreneur, but it could be within your space where you are. You don't have to quit, but to realize what is it that God has called you to do. 
And if you can identify that, I, no matter what, whether you are alone or not, that resilience, it will come naturally. Thank you. That's what I just wanted to say. Let's encourage the, the young ones to realize their passion. Thank you. Thank you so much, May. I think, Wanga, you, you opened your mic and you have a comment. I'm not sure if your hand was up, but I've also noted Hannah's hand is up. Um, whichever one of you, um, yeah, whichever one of you um, wants to speak first, then I think um, you are allowed to do so. Otherwise, I will give it to Hannah. Yeah, I think let Hannah go first. All right. No uh, okay, thank you so much. I just wanted to say that um, the stories that I heard from Eva and I think it's mem up here. I'm not sure they were quite relatable because at some point also I went through anxiety while I was I'm so busy with my studies. And you know, it's it's good to know that there are people that eventually have overcome that stage of their lives and they're still moving forward. So that that was quite inspirational for me. Thank you. Wanga, if you still have something to say, I think um, you can say that. Otherwise, um, after that, I want to pass on the mic to Sip just to you know wrap up as we have run out of time. Yeah, I think it's it's hand over to Sip. That's fine. Okay. Um, I thank you very much, uh, Sia. At this point in time, actually, I won't hold the mic for long. I'm handing over back to uh, Wanga. Sia, thank you for managing that Q&A for us. Um, so Wanga, if you could just thank everyone and close the session. Uh, first of all, introduce yourself because you're a very, very important person, but introduce yourself and then, and then close the session for us. Thanks to everyone for all the ideas and everything that you shared with us. I'll, definitely make an effort to connect with you on LinkedIn. Please share your links and um, I hand over to Wang at this point. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. So um, this was such a really well moderated event. I think without you having brought, bring, brought everyone together, you know, it wouldn't have created that air and atmosphere of openness. Um, so I really appreciate you having done that. Um, I, before I just thank everyone, there is something I'd like to share. Um, we all know the saying, um, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And I think when it comes to women, um, you know, it could somewhat go something along the lines of, give a woman a fish, you feed a family. You teach a woman to fish, you feed a nation. Learn how to fish from a woman, and you'll feed all of humanity. And I say this, you know, being part of Startup Cry now is where I grew up, raised by women. And even to this day, you know, this very event, it being moderated by Wu Sisbongi Lepoi, who's my mentor, it just shows the effect that women can have, not just in tech, but in the world in general. And it's not just the same thing, it's something that I've seen for myself. I mean, I remember when I was studying mechanical engineering, the women in our class, as few as they were, by far, they were the best. Like, literally, they were the best um, students. You know, they literally came with the best idea, best projects. And even now, those um, women that are, that were part of our class are literally, um, one of them is, like, a graduate from Oxford. You know, she's leading this company that was literally bought by McKinsey. You know, um, and it's not just something that's just said for the sake of transformation. And it's one of the things that I'd actually like us to sort of focus on. And just from this talk alone, you would have um, seen the comment from the likes of Nombulelo, Palesa, um, I see Tandek has also been commenting. These are just such amazing people who I've had the opportunity to interact with from time to time. And, you know, thinking that it's actually a Wednesday today, we could actually have these type of talks for Wednesday and have like all women related talks be taken over by you know, um, to topics relating to women and the issues that you face, not only in tech, but in entrepreneurship. Um, but having said that, I wanna thank our speakers, Apiwe, Mam Eva, 
Mama Masekho as well as Hannah for you know enlightening us on your journeys. And it's 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 created such a platform that you know everyone could relate with. And you would have seen from the comments and all the questions that you guys created the space for people to feel free to share their journeys, share their experiences, share not only their successes, but also their failures, because that's the reality. And I love how you also touched on how tough it is. Um, I have heard these stories, you know, I'm speaking from a man and, you know, I see the privilege. I see the, 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 the you know, I see the boys club that, you know, especially taking entrepreneurship is I see these things for myself, you know, and, and I think it's very important for, for, for us to also be called out in the roles that we play um, for not making the environment um, as conducive as it should be. And most important, I also want to um, thank um, Teho. I want to thank um, Siam Tanda. I also want to thank, thank um, Sis Bongile for actually having made this event happen. Without them, we would have not been able to come together. And this is just the first of many. Um, like I said, the, these can be regular as once a week or however often we have something to talk about with regard to tech and entrepreneurship, not just in Kimberley, but as South Africa as a whole and also how we can obviously effect change in the little um, steps that we make on a daily basis in our journeys, in our workplaces. So all the links that you find in the chat, guys, please follow up on them. Please, Nambule um, listed her event. Um, the, the speakers did share their hashtags, their social media platforms and all the initiatives that they are part of. Um, so yeah, this is, as I say, the first event that I've been a part of, and I'll be working together with Tseho Acho um, in running startup grind and um, Kimberly going forward. So thanks guys for being a part of this and we're hoping that eventually, you know, these, these will be happening physically. But for now, let's enjoy the, the these cross collaborations, you know, between the Eastern Cape, East London startup grind. And if you know of any other startup grind that would be love, that would love to collaborate, please do um, feel free to um, send through suggestions. But yeah, thanks everyone, most importantly, actually everyone that tuned in to all the viewers, guests, um, without you guys, this actually would not have motivated us to actually create this event. So thanks again to everyone. And on that note, um, I'm not sure, Sib, would you like to take over or should I say goodbye to everyone? I think I'm gonna say goodbye to everyone. Agreed. Okay, um, Teho, okay, Teho is clapping hands. Okay, Sib, you wanna close finally? Um, all, all I'd like is for everyone for a moment to go on camera so that we can have a group pick. If oh, you yes. can, if you can, uh, it would be nice to just have one final group pick and then uh, we will just close. Cool, cool. Who else can join us in this pick? A few cameras are coming up. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, okay, I've, ta I've taken a few. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Bye. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.